Hi, Tracy here, also known as Mercy Tiara, with another episode of Find Your Mojo. Each episode will bring you a prompt or a challenge to get your creative juices flowing and get you scrapping and documenting your memories. This time, the prompt is to start with a card, so let's get started. I've pulled out the Cedar Lane card kit here, and I have these three photos of my cat that I want to scrapbook for this page. But in order to get my juices flowing, I'm going to start by making a card. And uh, this is a card kit, and I'm just going to use the same supplies that I have kind of picked out for card making to make the layout this time. So I'm starting with this piece of pink cardstock that comes in the Cedar Lane card making kit, and I'm just going to make a card base out of it. And so I'm just going to cut it in half. I started by taking off the manufacturer's strip and then I'm going to cut it in half lengthwise. And I'm just using my Stampin' Up! trimmer here. And what I've done is I put the measurements of a card right on the ruler that swings out from that trimmer just because I don't make cards often enough to really, rem I mean, the measurements are pretty easy. It's <laughs> it's an eight and a half by 11 card cut in half. Um, and then the mat, I like to mat my cards. I'm gonna cut a mat right now, a quarter of an inch smaller. So that would be four by 5.25. So the overall folded card would be 5.5 by 4.25. So here I am just cutting that mat and I'm cutting it twice because I do have two cards. So one piece of cardstock, eight and a half by 11 cardstock does make two cards. So I'm just going to go ahead and make two. I usually make two cards at a time just because it's, it's easy to do it. When you have your supplies out, you might as well make two. So I'm starting with these two card bases like these are the mats for the card bases and I'm actually going to start by I thought about I want to make inner liners for these cards as well and I thought about using the pre-made cards that come with the kit and just making it a little bit smaller to make liners uh, again my liners are also uh, 4 by 5.25 but I decided to use a piece of white cardstock that came in the kit instead of using the pre-folded pre-cut cards that I really enjoy having on hand I thought I would do that. So now I'm just familiarizing myself with the kit itself and having a look at what kinds of embellishments come in it. My goal here is to make a very, very fast, quick, simple, easy card, not a beautiful, detailed, elaborate, intricate card. And so I'm really just thinking about combining some die cut pieces. This will familiarize myself with the content of the kit, the kinds of embellishments and how they work together. Uh, just, just playing around right at this phase right here is making me more familiar with how these elements work together so that later when I go on to make my scrapbooking page, I have a good sense of the scale of these items, what looks nice, layered, over what and that sort of thing so even this process like the parts of this process that don't end up on the card it's still helping getting my juices flowing for what I'm going to do when I do scrapbook and so that white piece of cardstock that you see there is that liner that I made and I'm making my liners at the same time that I'm making my outsides of my cards which isn't usually the way I do it but because I'm doing this as a way to inspire myself to scrapbook I thought I would do it this way so I just took a piece of the scrap gray pattern paper with the daisies on it and cut it down to little strips. I am sorry that so much, I was zoomed in a little bit too much, so some of this is off screen, but I am just uh, making little white mats to go inside of the card and um, they have a little strip like a little vert a little horizontal strip of the gray pattern paper and then a little die cut attached to it and you see me here just kind of fiddling with what looks nice together on this lower card the top card came together so easily it's just the tree and I put the happy birthday over top of it and that's just going to stay just as it is now here I wanted a matching um, or coordinating green leaf to come out the other side underneath of that tag to balance off with that large green die cut leaf. So I just cut apart the rose die cut and took the leaves off of it and stuck it under the tag. And now I'm just thinking about how I might want to decorate this and add some final touches that will give me a little bit more texture to my card. I find, especially when I'm just using die cuts on a card, I like to add something that's extra texture. So I'm thinking here about adding a piece of ribbon here. This ribbon came in the kit. 
And it coordinates so beautifully that I, I didn't want to not use it. So I cut a piece right there. And now I'm just going to attach the happy birthday die cut to the tree. And then I'm, I'm actually going to just use some Tombow Mono Multi glue to glue this charm that came in the kit to the little banner that says happy birthday. And I'm lining it up so that the circle of the charm is lined up with the circle in like the hole that's in the die cut piece because I'm thinking I might want to put a little brad through the center of that just to finish it off and make it look a little bit less unfinished. Now this bottom card is already designed it's just a matter of gluing everything onto the like in place. So I actually put adhesive on the back of my card and then I just put the die cut pieces on it as I went. And now for this card, I'm just going to wrap the ribbon around. So I don't need such a long piece of ribbon. I just tuck it around the, the back side because you won't see that because this will be mounted on the card base that I cut out of pink already. I'm going to put a little string through my tag because I like my tags to always have strings on them if possible. So that's just a piece of twine from my stash that I use to tie a little bow gives it a little bit of extra texture and detail and I'm fussing with my bows because I'm really not very good at making them but uh, try not to obsess too much over your bows because they don't have to be perfect it's fine for them to look natural and like they're you know it's a handmade card so it's okay if it looks handmade <laughs> um, I'm going to glue the tree and the banner down to the card I put an extra little bit of Tombow glue on the back of the little charm just because I wanted it to make sure that the charm didn't move around and that's more during the design process because I am going to put a brad in there as I mentioned as well and the reason I was gone for a little bit was to go to my sewing machine and sew some gray stitching and I just did it on my big sewing machine because it's already preloaded with gray with gray thread and I added some gray thread stitching just a straight stitch all the way around the outside edge of uh, of the cards and also a lot kind of horizontally along the bottoms of my little clusters that I have for inside of my cards and now this next part is really my very favorite part of making a card it's where everything comes together first I have to do this final detail of inserting a little brad from my stash I think it's a really old basic gray basic gray brad and I just inserted that and now here is where the magic happens I mat that base that I was working on like that mat that I was working on I put it on the base and then the stamp set that came in this kit has this really adorable little stamp that says handmade with love or made with love let me double check it says made with love and it was just the perfect thing to put on the back of a card so I just took out a pigment ink in a coordinating pink color it's only very slightly darker than the cardstock itself and now I'm just going to do the exact same thing with the other card which is mat my pre-designed front onto the card base and then put my pre-designed liner inside and quickly just stamp that tone on tone pink and look at that I have two really beautiful cards that didn't take very much time at all we are now eight minutes into this video and at about four times the speed so that's about half an hour and I have two cards made and I'm feeling very excited and inspired to scrapbook now that I've worked with this with these products a little bit so I'm taking that black polka dotted paper from the kit again I'm still using the Cedar Lane card making kit and I trimmed off the manufacturer's strip from the black and white polka dot and then I took this Maggie Holmes carousel paper I love the wood grain it's just so pretty and I'm matting it a little bit off center just because I wanted to make sure that the polka dots showed on the bottom there and now I have my photos and I, I kind of like them just laying there in a casual way like that kind of all overlapped with one another I decided to spread this gray pattern paper that I had already used on the cards I, I love it so much that I wanted to use it on my page as well and so I'm going to have that span horizontally almost like a band across the page 
And I did go and sew around the around the outside edges with that same gray thread that I used in the card. So you will see a lot of repetition between the elements that I used in my cards and the elements that I use on my scrapbooking page. And that's not really required because nobody's going to really see the cards and the page together. But it's kind of like how my brain was working. I just kind of found that I appreciated the beauty of these supplies as I worked with them on the cards. And and so I really wanted to include them in my scrapbooking page because I'll be giving away the cards and the scrapbooking page will be staying in my albums. And so that will give me, you know, a little bit of those cards to keep for myself. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to give away a card that you've worked so hard on, especially if you don't make them very often like I don't. So sorry, I was missing in action for a few minutes there. I think I just forgot to turn off my camera when I went to tend to something. So I have this uh, greatest he grateful heart die cut with the with the florals around it, and I'm going to put that in that big corner between my photo on the left and the top photo on the right. And then I'm going to basically build three embellishment clusters around the these uh, photos. And I'm basically using the intersection points to be the places where those embellishment clusters will be. So you'll notice that I have these these photos overlapped in such a way that I have three corners. One of them is much less obvious, the one over on the right hand side, because it's just a little tiny corner where one photo kind of sticks out more than the other. Uh, but the other two corners are pretty obvious. Now what I'm doing as I'm clustering this is I want little bits of pink on each corner. So that's why I added that tag right there. And then I'm going to add this flower because there's nothing else pink left in the die cuts at this point. So that's the flower that I cut the leaves off of for the card. And so um, that adds a little bit of pink in each corner. In fact, there's actually two elements of pink in this corner I'm working on right now. This, the phrases on this uh, on these die cuts are not really relevant to my page. So I'm just layering my embellishments so that they cover up the phrases. And that way I just get that little splay of foliage sticking out around the around that rose and I don't have whatever the saying is that wasn't really relevant. So now I'm just sticking that rose so that you can't really see that it's been cut so that the cut part is over underlapping with the photo. And then on this side, again, this tag provides the pink element and I really love that little sprig of leaves, that gray, dark gray leaf, it's so pretty. And then this floral circle element can overlap my photo. And then I decided to add a little sprig of leaves. You saw me kind of hanging on to them over to the side because I thought I would be using them. And I'm going to use these leaves as a way of adding a little bit of visual interest to each of my three clusters. And again, it's one more element of repetition. I find adhering to the design principles like using a visual triangle and using repetition and um, it, those sorts of uh design elements really help a layout go along quickly, especially if you feel a little bit unmotivated or lacking in creativity, then just kind of like following that. It's not really a recipe, but just using those principles to guide you can really help you get unstuck in your creative process. So I was I re I would really like to use that ribbon, but I can't think of how to use it. And I found that that rose was just a little bit too grabbing your attention. So I did put a butterfly on top of it. It's like a matted gold butterfly. And I'm off to my sewing machine again. That's why I'm gone for a second here. And I put that butterfly on top of the rose because the rose was just popping out too much. And it had a, a much stronger line to it. Like it had a slightly different design feel to it than any of the other elements on the page and so by covering up it up so that there's just a little bit of it showing I still get the pink in that cluster that I was looking for but I'm no longer it no longer kind of stands out as oh there's something strange over there in that corner now I I have very little journaling to do about this I basically um, wanted to put the date and a couple of words about this page 
on this layout. So I'm using my roller date stamp and I'm going to use some stays on ink to ink these labels because they have a slight sheen effect to them. So I didn't want to have to wait for my ink to dry or worry about what kind of ink. So I just use stays on because it's a no brainer when you have a slick surface. Now I put that up under the butterfly and I really like it there. And I do have a little bit more to say. So I want to say pillow paw and then in brackets pododermatitis. And I know that that's a bit of a strange journaling because it's very kind of all by itself. But I feel like I don't really have to say a whole lot more about it than that. Um, our cat has a has a, a really painful condition in her paws. And I just, you know, like I just wanted to to kind of put the conditions name there so that I can remember that one of the reasons I was documenting my cat right now is because she is struggling with her health and we're all feeling really badly that she's she's been in pain and there's lots of trips to the vet and lots of administering of medicine and I don't really want to focus on all of those negative aspects but I do want to just kind of mark it in my in my album so that as I'm flipping through I can say oh right our cat was sick then um, and that's all that I really have to say I don't really want to and it, there would be no problem with focusing on all of the stresses involved in medicating a cat and all those sorts of things I just didn't feel like it today so it's not that it's not good to do that I think it is actually sometimes really helpful to document some of those more stressful things I just wasn't in the mood and didn't feel it necessary at this time but uh, that's just the way it is for me so you'll notice here that I am putting as I mentioned I always like to put string in my tags so I'm doing something a little bit differently I'm putting the thick ribbon through the hole and then I'm using this twine it's just white Baker's twine to tie the ribbon that gives me a little bit of an interesting element to these tags because it not only has the ribbon but it also has a cute little tiny bow and then I'm just cutting the ribbon so that it basically so that it doesn't interfere with my page protector when I put it into my album my final detail is to add some of these beautiful little gems to my page these are kind of like well I'll tell you what they're like they're faceted enamel dots but they're not really enamel they're kind of like a clear they look like glass so they're not they're a little bit see-through and they have some depth to them and I love that they're faceted I have used these before on pages and I really really love the delicate feminine detail that they add Now I'm thinking about my title. Now I have these uh, these letter stickers. Now the the card kit does not come with large letter stickers because it's a card kit, not a not a scrapbooking kit. So I have these letters from Pink Fresh Studio. They were in my stash, and I thought it would look really cute to put the word Chloe, just the name of the cat as the title. Put the word Chloe on that bottom right hand photo of her, um, kind of smelling my pattern paper in my scrap room. And I actually don't have the right letters. There's no E in that letter set left. And I do have a second a second set of those letters. So I was uh, the reason I was gone for so long is I was actually off looking for it. And I couldn't find my second set. I've found it since then, but I couldn't find it for this page. So I went into my stash and found these really beautiful. I like them because they're kind of feminine because of the glitter on them. But they're also very understated and neutral because it's just a, just a really soft gray color. I really love them. They're thickers. And so I used my thicker alignment tool to line those up and spell them out. And then they attached really, really easily to my photo in just the spot that I wanted it to. So I'm feeling as though this is pretty much done, but I would like to outline this gray paper. I'm wishing I had outlined it, so I'm just going to outline it now. I just find that that gives it a little bit more distinction and definition and kind of have, helps the band across the center to really stand out from that wood grain background. I like that quite a lot. So here is the close up. You can see the stitching that I added off screen. And then here's my little couple of journaling labels overlapped with each other. And there's the tag and the cute little title, Chloe. I really love how this one turned out. 
If you think about it, it was, well, it was really fun and easy to make. And if you think about it, it only, like, it only took me about two hours to make the cards and the layout. And usually it takes me two hours to make a layout. So obviously making the cards ahead of time did result in me being a little bit smoother and faster in designing the page. So maybe everybody is on to something when they say, make a card if, you, if you're having trouble being motivated or finding the creative energy to scrapbook, because it did seem to work for me. It worked not only in that um, I was able to make a page, but it seems like I made my page more efficiently than I would have if I hadn't made a card. So that is an interesting little side effect that I wasn't really expecting, but I'm really pleased to have learned that about myself, that I seem to scrapbook a little bit more smoothly if I make a card first. So I will keep that in mind, and I hope that you guys keep it in mind as well. And let me know in a comment below if you have ever tried this technique, and if you haven't, uh, give it a try and let me know how it goes. I'm really curious to hear how starting with a card works out for you guys. In the meantime, check out some of the other videos here on the Scrapbook and Cards Today channel and have a really great scrappy week.